Hello friends, Namaskar. In the case of public charitable entities, public religious entities, there is a form, form called 10B, which is required to be uploaded by such institution on income tax portal. Now, what is this particular form or why it is so important that I have to come before you through this video? Through this video, my dear friends, I am trying to brief to you that what is the genesis of this form and what are the key points pertaining to it which if not complied with would have a severe consequence on the relevant institution. So I hope in that context you will find this particular video useful. So to begin with, I would start with this point that who is liable to file form 10B? Suppose if you are a charitable trust or an institution which may be a section 25 company or section 8 company under companies act or you may be a public religious trust or institution or at a larger side I may call them NGO, non-government organization who are into welfare and they are at the same time registered under section 12AA or 12AB of income tax act 1961 prima facie such kind of institution are covered from the scope of form 10B. So, we need to understand that if you are a trustee, you are a manager, you are at the helm of affair <clears throat> of a charitable or religious institution, then you have to take care that if Form 10B is applicable in your case, it is duly filed. Otherwise, severe consequences may follow on such trust. Now, let me discuss with you that why there is so much of emphasis on the applicability of Form 10B or ensuring that Form 10B is duly filed. See, I am putting up before you the relevant extracts from Section 12A of Income Tax Act 1961. The title of this section is Conditions for Applicability of Section 11 and 12. I hope you all would agree with me if I say that if a trust wants to claim the exemption under income tax law, prima facie it is available to it under the provisions of Section 11 and 12. Now, to get this exemption of 11 and 12 section of income tax law, the trust is required to satisfy certain conditions. And this can be understood with reference to section 12a subsection 1 which says that the provisions of section 11 and section 12 shall not apply in relation to income of any trust or institution unless following conditions are fulfilled. So, you will not be entitled to avail the exemption of section 11 and 12 as a charitable or religious institution unless you satisfy following condition. Now what are these conditions and one of these conditions, I am not putting up all condition, I am simply putting up form 10B related condition before you which reads that where the total income of the trust or institution as computed under this act without giving effect to provisions of section 11 and 12. I will explain it. What is the meaning of without giving benefit of the section 11 and 12? So, where the total income of trust or institution as computed under this act without giving the effect to the provisions of section 11 and 12 exceeds the maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax in any previous year, the accounts of the trust or institution for that year have been audited by an accountant as defined in explanation below subsection 2 of 288 before the specified date referred to in section 44ab and the person in receipt of income furnishes by that date the report of such audit in the prescribed form. Mind you, my dear friend, this prescribed form is form 10B only. Prescribed form duly signed and verified by such accountant and setting forth such particular as may be prescribed. So, the whole importance of section uh, 12A subsection 1 clause B is moving towards applicability of form 10B that number one, when this form is applicable, suppose if there is a charitable institution who is in receipt of 85 lakh rupees donation and say out of 85 lakh rupees, 80 lakh rupees they have already spent on the various charitable purposes. Now, if this exemption of spending on the charity is not provided to them, then they are left with say 85 lakh rupees. Now, this 85 lakh rupees is certainly above the exemption limit of rupees 2.5 lakh. Now, if it is above 2.5 lakh without giving the benefit of this 80 lakh deduction, then it is compulsory for such trust to obtain form 10B. Suppose you say that we are not bothered about it, then what are the consequences? The consequence is very clear, sir, because there is an operation of law, there is a force of law, that once you do not do this, 
once you don't follow form 10b you will lose 11 and 12 exemption and now what will be the consequence if you will lose the 11 and 12 exemption for this year most probably income tax department or cpc which is the wing of income tax department while they will be processing your return they will not give you benefit of this 80 lakh and in that scenario what will happen on the whole 85 lakh rupees they will probably apply the tax rate of MMR which will be 30% plus surcharge plus HEC. So which is a very dangerous consequence my dear friends to the charitable institution or to the religious institution. So this is the whole thirst that why form 10b filing is very very important for a public charitable trust or institution or for a religious trust or institution. Now a question comes that okay let's say if a trust has make up its mind that okay we will file form 10b then there should be some due date yet that due date indication was there in that bear act reading which i did before you but let me be very specific say for an example assessment year 22 23 if we are going to file form 10b then what will be the due date for this the due date will be 30th of september 2022 now suppose if this due date is skipped what will happen then the relevance of form 10b will not be there and if that will not be there what will happen again that thing which i discussed with you that for the relevant year you will lose the exemption of section 11 and 12 so what is important here is that not only form 10b is filed it is also filed within the prescribed due date so if you will miss to file within the prescribed due date then for the relevant year not for all years further then for the relevant financial year the trust will not be able to claim the exemption of section 11 and 12 and this is not a kind of simple consequence it is a very dangerous consequence for a charitable or religious trust that how would you pay tax when you have already spent on charity so one has to be cautious this is the message which i am trying to give again again through this video now one more question what if itr is filed but form 10b is not filed now probably by the last discussion which i had on the last slide you are very clear now that merely filing of itr my dear friends is not sufficient if you are covered under section 12a subsection 1 clause b which i discussed with you that is a charitable religious institution it is mandatory that or you are required that form 10b is filed in your case even if you have filed itr but you did not file form 10b then the department will process your return without giving the benefit of section 11 and 12 and which is not a kind of consequence which anybody as a trust or institution would be interested into or would be thinking of at all. So the suggestion is that not only ITR is filed. Now here when I am discussing ITR for the assessment year 22-23, I may say that form 10B due date is 30th of September and ITR due date will be 31st of October. So government is giving you a gap that okay, let you first file form 10B. And how to file form 10b that is with the help of a child accountant who will file it through his professional login then your particular uh, login of the trust or charitable trust will have that kind of thing appearing that the ca has uploaded form 10b and you, there you have to accept it so unless this process completes form 10b can't be said to be filed now just to answer this question specifically yet i given a hint about that who may issue form 10b and what is its process so let me explain it for the benefit of charitable and religious entities sir this is done by a practicing charter accountant that who is holding the certificate of practice this practicing charter accountant through his professional login on the income tax department once he conducts an audit of your institution and he will issue a form 10b online in your particular case filling up all the details which are required in form 10b and once he uploads it through his portal the form will start reflecting in the relevant login of the trust or institution as the case may be and there as a trustee as a manager of the trust you have to accept the form if you are in agreement with that form once you accept then it can be said that the form 10b is filed so if this process is not complete then you can't assume that form 10b is filed merely ca uploading through his professional id is not sufficient the trust has to also accept by the due date that is 30th of september so if you don't do that or if you miss that then the whole exemption of section 11 and 12 may be denied to you so that is where one has to be very careful now a very important question 
which one may ask me that okay mr bartia let me know is there any penalty for non filing of 10b sir i could not find any specific penalty in income tax act 1961 if i am correct somebody may correct me even for non filing of form 10b by the trust but but if you don't file form 10b then you can understand that for the relevant year you are going to lose the exemption of section 11 and 12 and i can say that losing the exemption of 11 and 12 for the relevant assessment year itself is a very very big penalty and therefore it can't be thought of or it would be a nightmare if somebody says that okay we would escape or we had escaped this form 10b so form 10b in my opinion is more or less mandatory if you are such a trust or institution who is registered under section 12a and or 12ab and your income without considering the benefit of section 1112 exceeds the maximum amount not chargeable to tax that is what i mean 2.5 lakh rupees so one has to be careful on that front at the end my dear friends i thought that many of the charitable or religious institutions are framed in india under the enthusiasm that we will serve the society there is nothing bad in thinking such kind of good approach but not only creating an institution is important but also running the institution as per the compliance provisions of the law is very important so my advisory through this video is to all those charitable and religious instit institutions or trust who are registered under section 12a 12ab of income tax law and who are supposed to file 10b form and if somehow they are not aware about form 10b and its consequences then that is the intention with which i wanted to come before you with this topic so i hope you will find the content of this video uh, useful to you thank you very much for being with me wishing you all the best jai hind